hello everyone and welcome back to my channel this is life in the diaspora with me gladys briggs so sorry i wasn't able to upload consistently last week i've been dealing with bereavements and grief before this whole nsas hashtag drama started and when the whole thing skyrocketed to where we ended up on tuesday night i just couldn't take it anymore i had to be quiet I had to come out of all social medias and just go into my um to my own quiet moment to be able to handle this negative energy to be able to deal with this toxic energy i am feeling a lot better now and so in today's video i'm going to be reflecting on everything that happened Welcome back to my channel this is life in the diaspora with me gladys briggs and in today's video i just want to like do a little reflection on um the whole um, everything that has happened in the past one week it's exactly one week today since we had the lekki massacre and um you guys you know that i'm from nigeria that's where i was born i live in nigeria till um early in my early 20s or so, yeah thereabouts then i came to the uk so I just wanted to have a little reflection on everything that happened and just think about the way forward seriously after that um that event on that tuesday that's 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 <laughs> i don't even want to remember it i i couldn't you know I, I i stayed awake the whole night because i was awake on social media and people were just sending links to videos this that i'm like oh my goodness what is this I mean, I couldn't, I put my phone off, but I couldn't sleep still. Then I went onto uh, my television and I was following up on Arise News, Arise News and Channels and Punch and all of those of them that were, that were updating us on what was happening in Nigeria. I was following them and I was following a few YouTubers as well that were um, bringing up the updates. Hmm. I could not believe how things were just unfolding. I could not, first of all, I could not believe the dramatic like how why how did we go from carrying placards to like like rifles like sh shooting people down i could not get my head around that that really just messed up with my brain mentally i, I just needed to switch off i needed to by the by wednesday morning i knew i had to like come off all social media come off everything and just have a rest and just disconnect from it you know and when the lies started coming the governor, the the politicians, the president's speech that was that contained nothing, the speech that made everybody speechless, the much the long awaited and the much sought after speech that left everybody speechless and created another another um another you know people started to share these videos of Buhari versus Jibrin, you know. Because every time that you call the president to speak and he doesn't show up as a president, he shows up as somebody that is from the planet, planet Zog or wherever he, he shows up from. Then it, it makes people think that truly it may be Jibrin. Then it's, we got all these vlog, vloggers versus YouTubers that were peddling all these different stories that you didn't even know which one to believe on. These YouTubers, whenever you want to bring your stories, verify your facts. Don't just... Like, don't just because you want views, just carry, oh, Tinubu's son is dead. Oh, Tinubu's son was kidnapped. The wife was kidnapped. This happened. That happened. Did you get the facts? Or you're just carrying story that you haven't verified? Where did you get that story from? And as a vlogger or a blogger or a YouTuber, you should you should be able to um, know when something is fake and when something is real, you know? Because people rely on you to give them verified information. Don't be all those people that any story that they carry, as long as Insta Blog Ninja has carried it on Facebook, Pram is on YouTube, YouTube, you have shared it on your page without verifying. You know, we rely on you guys for the authentic news. Those of you that are giving us daily updates on stuff like that. Oh, it was just overwhelming. And I was just thinking to myself, where do we go from here? You know, where do we go? These are children. They just came out, you know, to express themselves. They were peaceful. You know, when they were singing the national anthem, when they were firing at them and they were still singing and, and waving their flags, the thing broke me completely. I was just in tears because I remembered, 
I remember what that song meant to me. I remember flags. I remember marching at October 1st, going for March past. I just remember so many things and how patriotic that you are, you've been taught to be. And then all of a sudden, your patriotism is thrown in at you completely. They tried their best to make it as peaceful as they could. But for that DJ switch that gave the real evidence, that lady, oh my goodness, well done to you. Well done to you, DJ switch. But for you, DJ switch, everything could have been what it always is. Lies upon lies upon lies upon damn lies. What a country. Seriously, I don't even know what to make of Nigeria. Like, I don't know what to make of the country. <laughs> According to Parara Mok News, that even me as I am here now, I am photoshopped. <laughs> I don't even know whether I'm real. I'm photoshopped. Oh my goodness. What a country. Full of lies. The president's speech was empty. There was nothing in there. There was no empathy. There was absolutely nothing in the speech. If you'd gone to a place where people lost their children will you go there and go and start talking about the promises you want to how much we want to offer them in the future what about now what about dealing with the situation that is on ground now dealing with that problem first before jumping to the things you want to do in the next 10 years who cares about that at the moment people don't even have food to eat right now this morning as i woke up with the itv news or bbc news nigerians were <laughs> were caught in a, in a tanker they were caught in a tanker trying to escape the country. They're already in the country. So they have to write papers now for them to deport them. What a shame. Every day. This is a country where there's no war. There's no war in Nigeria. But look, we are worse than Middle East. People are trying to run away from the country every single day. I, I looked at the girl. The girls, the YouTubers that do uh, Canadian uh, immigration vlogs, their, their, their views were just flying, like skyrocketing because people were there. Trying to find out how to get to Canada, how to get to UK, how to get to... Ah! Why? 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 What is wrong with having a peaceful... Um, what is wrong with having a peaceful country? I saw that girl from the north that was saying, was talking to somebody. I don't even know who the person is. But the, the conversation was on the, on the lines of, you know, why are you people doing this? Why are you telling people this type of thing and the all the man had to say was that they have to protect the northern the honor of the north ag you made a video you told people you said that even if Buhari isn't working even if the country isn't working we should stand united as northerners yes. AG, what would you do that now AG, what would you what would you do that Yes, now, yes, of course, we know, we know that hoodlums have hijacked the protest. Now, yes, of course, we know, we know that hoodlums have hijacked the protest. But what you're telling northerners is you're telling northerners not to speak. You're telling northerners not to stand up for their rights. You're telling northerners that, 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 that northerners should stand united and, and, and stand by, by Buhari and support. But that's what you said in the video. The video was from Hausa. AG, you cannot tell me. No, no, no. Have you ever seen Almajiris in the East? Have you ever seen Almajiris in the West? Have you ever seen Almajiris? We have the highest number of Almajiris, highest number of illiteracy, highest, highest, highest rate of poverty. What are you talking about? Yes, to catch Akari Mutinchi, catch Akari Mukari, we should we should protect our pride as northerners so that Buhari will not be removed as president. That's what you said.
what is the honor of the north in comparison to the honor of nigeria as a country this is what i said in the last video we are patriotic to our tribe we are patriotic to our region we are patriotic to our religion we are patriotic to our ethnicity but we are not patriotic to nigeria why why can you not make a sentence without saying that's a bull man that did this or that's your bad man or that house man how about that fair guy or that you know use adjectives use adjectives leave people's tribes alone leave people's religions alone it's a personal thing religion faith is a personal thing it's between you and god it's not between you and any man so leave people and their tribes and their religions alone people culturally do people from a certain place culturally do certain things we know that but allow them to be and learn ways to coexist. Learn ways to coexist. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll get to somewhere in the future. I don't know. If after all this drama, nothing changes, I don't know what's, what is going to change, whether anything is going to change eventually. I don't know. We have to keep on uh, praying. And praying is not enough. The prayer, they say prayer in Christianity, they say prayer without work is, uh, you know, you have to, as you're having faith, you have to, you have to pray you have to work as well you know if you have faith and you don't work zero so you have to work as well that's it i don't know governments like who is the president of nigeria because to me the president seemed not like a president it seemed like uh the speech seemed like a, a military dictator type speech it didn't seem like a democratic person's speech how can you say you're a democrat when your everything you said, you were even threatening uh, neighboring countries and the people who your your people that you know times like this, you call on your fellow presidents and say, "Oh, president of Ghana, how do I deal with something like this?" President of uh, this thing, you phone them and you ask them, "How do you deal with something like this?" But you are you said nothing for two weeks. The children stayed there protesting. Then people hoodlums were sent in to destroy. And look at the aftermath of everything. Look at the madness. Just look at what has gone. And look at all the palliatives. When I saw the Oba's palace and saw how desecrated it was, how the children jumped in and, and how they, they, they broke things and destroyed everything in that palace, the thing that came to my mind was, this is way beyond, this is like, this is deep-rooted. This is a pain, a pain that the people unleashed. They brought out all of their pain you know, and poured it out there for the world to see. Look at those children that jumped into the swimming pool. And as they were jumping in, somebody was saying, oh boy, aha, when they swim for swimming pool, imagine, imagine, there is no child in this country. In fact, swimming is part of the curriculum in this country. It's a life skill. Every child in this country where I live must know how to swim. My children went through it when they were year four, year three, year four. They take them every day to the swimming pool for maybe two weeks until they get that skill. They can do it. So children have not seen swimming pool in their life before. They have never seen it in their life before. Maybe they live by the water front, water side, what we call water side. But they have never been in a pool before. They were so excited. They jumped in and started swimming. And they were phoning their friends. Oh boy, you know like when you buy a new car. Oh boy, or when you marry. I don't marry you. I don't born no. Oh boy, we're there for swimming pool no. We are in the swimming pool. That's the feeling. Poverty. Like poverty. Generational poverty. Maybe you've lived in the, in the, you've lived in a, in a poor, a impoverished area all your life. You haven't seen anything like that. Let me not even go into the, the one of the palliatives. What will the government, what excuse? What is their excuse? What is the excuse for all those bags of rice, indomi noodles, pasta, vegetable oil, things that were meant for the poor people to feed them? You kept them. What was your reason for keeping them? Cross River State Governor, I don't even know what you're saying. What do you mean by you got the last order on the 12th of October? That warehouse that we saw was packed full with food to the brim. Yet people are so hungry. Be careful, be careful. I've been saying this. You keep the masses, uneducate them, impoverish them, and you think you can... How many rich people are in Nigeria in comparison to the poor people? The day the poor people arise on you, that will be the end of it. And that is exactly what is happening now. I've been shouting it. You cannot keep them in poverty. You cannot... In this country, in the UK, poor are so powerful. They can remove you from government anytime. They are so powerful. The poor in this country, the preference, when you go to the site, the areas where there is like the, the postcode, where there is um, how they describe poor, the poor area. Okay, let me just put it that way. 
yeah, the low income area. That's where you will see the biggest parks. That's where you will see the best hospital. The children in those areas, they start school from uh, earlier stage. They provide uh, maybe early start school for them. They provide, provide, they provide bicycles. They provide everything for them so that life is comfortable for them. Nigeria, Babas, I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I can only share my experiences that I have so that you see what life could have been for you. What, what life could have, what, how you could have, what you could have done for the masses. Now the food you kept to make more money. What about your name? Your children's name? When you are not on this planet anymore, what legacy are you leaving behind? What legacy are you leaving behind for when you are not going to be on this planet anymore? You leave the legacy of the man who stole the country's wealth just to give his children the best life. And his children now being um, exiled from the country. Because that's what's going to happen in the future. That's what's going to happen. They will chase you. Your children may have to change their name from your name because your name will be stigmatized. Don't think that because it's not happening now, it's not happening in the future. This country where I'm living in, they have called people that have died 10 years ago. They called them out of their grave and disgraced them. Yes, you...